I bet a lot of you are thinking of moving to Phoenix, Arizona, and in this video, what we're gonna talk about is the cost of living here in Phoenix. And when I refer to the cost of living, I'm talking about the housing, I'm talking about the rental market, uh, the resale market. We're gonna talk about utilities, we're gonna talk about taxes. If you're gonna take a night out, how much is that gonna cost? We're gonna cover it all right here in this video, so stay tuned. My name is Ryan Meeks. I am a realtor down here in the Southeast Valley and you're watching the Escape to Arizona YouTube channel for everything Arizona and I specialize in uh, relocation so if you're looking to move here from another state uh, you hit the right channel. Just a reminder if you haven't hit that subscribe button down low go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified weekly of uh, different videos that we post and we're always talking about new things. We're doing neighborhood walkthroughs and a bunch of other fun stuff. And, and next week we're gonna uh, have a video of Canyon Lake and kayaking Canyon Lake. So that should be really cool and uh, just a sort of new experience for a lot of people that don't live here in Phoenix. We're gonna talk today about the uh, cost of living here in Phoenix and we're gonna switch screens and I'm gonna show you guys a website that I use. So first we're gonna take a look at a website that I use to compare uh, livability, cost of living, uh, from city to city, compare and contrast. So this website, it's bestplaces.net. It's a great place to go to to get an overall feel of uh, the economy that you're going to be moving into or uh, moving from. So uh, cost of living in Phoenix overall, the standard is 100. That's like the average in the U.S. So uh, that's sort of the benchmark. So Phoenix is at 103.7, and uh, groceries are a little bit less. Healthcare is a little bit less than the rest of the US. Housing has gone up and we'll talk about why that is now 103.5 and used to be uh, probably somewhere around 90, 92, 10 years ago. And um, utilities are just above the, uh, the average in the US, which really isn't too bad for living in a desert. And transportation's at 118, and there's really not a whole lot of transportation here. If you're um, gonna need transportation, would recommend just taking an Uber, um, but you'll definitely need a vehicle, especially if you're not living in uh, the city of Phoenix. If you're living in you know any of the uh, metropolitan areas, uh, just call them the suburbs of Phoenix, you'll definitely need a vehicle. We're going to run through all these. I just kind of want to give you guys an overall feel. And this is bestplaces.net slash cost of living is how you can get to this website. But uh, just to, it gives you a good overall feel uh, when comparing two different states. So let's get into why it's at 103.7. So let's talk about the housing market. So the housing market has been on the rise. It's been steadily increasing about 6% per year. Let me give you an example of uh, my house and you know I'll give you some personal details here. So we bought our house for $360,000. 2,900 square foot, 14,000 uh, square foot lot. And uh, it was built in 2005. So it's a little bit newer. Um, you know, we came from Illinois where most of the homes were built in the 1940s. Um, you probably have some as old as the uh, 1920s, to be honest with you. That house we sold for uh, 316 out there. It was about uh, 1,800 square feet. Definitely can get a little bit more for your money at that time. But housing prices have gone up uh, since 2017. They've been going up about 6% per year. And what we've noticed this past July, August, and September in 2020 is that uh, home prices have shot up some places 14 percent some places 10 percent so it's just been uh, bonkers here you have a lot of people trying to move here uh, half the west coast is on fire um, with just the craziness that's going on i feel like a lot of people are moving here and and the reaction or the response i get from people moving here especially from california is just that california is crazy so they got to get out of there they don't want their kids growing up in that type of environment so they're moving here. Um, if they're not moving here, they're, you know, one client I had was going to move here and then he got transferred before he could even move here. So he ended up moving to Texas um, just because he didn't want to be in a democratic state. He was just kind of done with, with, with that. So not sure what your feelings are there. I'm not going to get into politics and everything, but that's what's happening. You have a lot of, a lot of uh, democratic states. Um, the, the residents are moving here to Arizona. So it's shooting the prices up. And some of these houses were having, you know, 10, 20 offers. I think I heard that there was like 40 offers on one house in Chandler. So it's just a crazy market out there right now. And I really feel that what's going to be happening is, is there's going to be a lot of sellers coming onto the market in 
like October, November, December, thinking that they can get top dollar. I think there's going to be a lot of buyers that are going to be a little bit scared to, uh, to enter the market because people are waiving appraisals. Um, they're just going way over market value for these homes and, and purchasing them. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of buyers that are a little bit skittish and probably going to wait till, uh, till next year or after the election uh, to purchase a home. So anyways, housing prices are going up here. But the cool thing about, you know, even though we're, we're paying a little bit more for housing, is that our taxes, our property taxes are not that much. So uh, I believe we're still paying like $2,600 per year on this $360,000 home that we purchased you know, back in 2017. So we're not paying a whole lot in property tax. And to get that property tax, if you, if you want to calculate, um, you take the purchase price and you multiply that by 0 0.0068. And then that's going to give you your yearly property tax. It's, it's not that expensive. So the good thing about that is you're taking more money. You're putting it towards your home. You're putting it into... Uh, equity, you're, you're building equity, you're building, um, you know, you're, you're building your wealth rather than paying taxes uh, to a state that's not providing anything. As far as the cost of purchasing a home here, if you're looking at a three bedroom, two bathroom, uh, somewhere around 2,000 square foot home, you're going to be looking at roughly in Gilbert anywhere from 390 upwards to $420,000. Now, if you really want to get to Arizona, that's your plan. You can definitely move to the outskirts, and you'll see by the circle here, if you move to the outskirts, uh, anywhere from the Phoenix metropolitan area, uh, prices are going to go down quite a bit. So in Santan Valley, I, I, Santan Valley, I think, is a great growing community. There's a lot of new build communities growing there. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of stores, a lot of, um, a lot of jobs coming to, to this section of town. And it's beautiful, too. It's right near Santan Mountain. And, uh, you know, you can do some hiking. And then you're not too far from Canyon Lake, Saguaro Lake as well, if you want to go do some kayaking or just some adventuring or just get lost up in the mountains driving. So Santan Valley is a great option. And what you'll notice in Santan Valley uh, is prices are usually about fifty to $60,000 less than, um, say, Gilbert and maybe even more. You can actually uh, even find some homes that are under $300,000 right now in Santan Valley that are definitely livable communities and uh, provide some great value for you later on in terms of uh, equity on um, what it makes uh, per year. So Santan Valley is a great option. Um, and you know, if you're gonna move to uh, some of the nicer neighborhoods, you're definitely gonna be paying a little bit more. And Scottsdale, there is a part of Scottsdale. I know everybody you know, wants to, to move here and, and be in Scottsdale and you know, it's the uh, new next Silicon Valley, right? But uh, so South Scottsdale's uh, a great option. And some of those homes though, those are, those are a little bit older homes, definitely built in like the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and those are going to be going for like $300,000. So those have come up quite a bit as well, and uh, you're, you're not going to get quite as nice a home in South Scottsdale as you would in like Santan Valley, a little bit newer of a home, a little bit more modern. Um, but yeah, you're paying for a location, right? So location is going to cost you a little bit more. Um, but yeah, expect to pay if you're looking at a nice kind of suburbia community that has, uh, you know, families in it uh, for a 2,000 square foot home, three bed, two bath, anywhere right now, uh, I'd say in Gilbert, 350 to 450, just depending upon, uh, you know, updates to the home, if there's a pool or no pool and all that. So that is the price for a typical home. The rental market here, uh, usually rule of thumb, if you're looking in a nice city like Gilbert, uh, Tempe, Chandler, uh, even on the in the West Valley, it's going to be a little bit cheaper than the than the East Valley. But uh, rule of thumb, I say around seventeen, eighteen hundred square feet. Usually paying a dollar a square foot, and then once you hit that two thousand square foot mark, it's going to go down to about fifty cents to seventy five cents per square foot. I mean, you're going to find definitely some um, you know some exceptions to that rule. But you know, I I have a client who has a twenty three hundred square foot home. And uh, he wants to rent it out. And I told him, hey, try to get, try to get $2,300 for it. It's a nice home built in 2018. It's got a lot of updates. Um, I think it's like four beds, two or three baths. So it's a nice home. And uh, with, if, if you have a nice updated home, then you can get top dollar for it. All right, so that's a little bit about the housing costs. Let's talk about uh, once you have the house, how do you, how do you keep that house looking good? So uh, people say, you know, living in Arizona, you don't have to shovel sunshine. However, 
Um, you do have landscaping costs. So you'll notice that all the plants here grow like weeds. It's crazy. So they just, these palm trees, you gotta constantly cut off all the leaves once they die. If you don't take care of those palm trees, they look pretty ugly. You can get roof rats, you can get little yeah, rats living in there, and uh, it, it's, it's just nasty. So, so you have to cut these palm trees, you have to really um, trim all the trees, and a lot of times the community, the HOA, will require you to keep your yard and your, uh, your property looking nice. So there's a lot of maintenance that goes into that. So how much does that cost? It really depends on how big your yard is, but uh, some, some people looking at 20 bucks per week, uh, just like, you know, if you had little Timmy down the block come and mow your lawn, looking at $20, and that can go up to as high as like $60 per week, just depending upon how big your property is. So landscaping is going to have a little bit of a cost. As far as, you know, upkeep with a pool, uh, you could keep a pool looking good yourself. It is a lot of work here, especially after a monsoon, just keeping it clean. So I definitely would recommend having a pool guy, and that's going to cost you about $100 to $120 per month. Uh, to keep your pool looking good. And you have to do that all year round because we don't close up the pools here in the winter. So yes, it costs a lot to keep your house looking good, to keep it maintained. And uh, that's just another cost of living that you have here. So let's talk about utilities. Obviously you're moving to Arizona. It's one of the hottest places in the country during the summer. Otherwise it's you know nice for the other eight months. So four months, you're gonna have a pretty hefty uh, air conditioning electric bill. So how much is that bill? Well, I have a 2,900 square foot home, like I said, built in 2005, and it's not the most insulated home. I can definitely tell that. So, you know, the AC units do run a lot, and we have two AC units. We have one that um, cools the downstairs, and then we have one that cools the upstairs. Uh, one of the things about our home is that we do have like a 30 foot, 40 foot ceiling right when you walk in. So the first and the second floor, uh, you do have that airflow. The heat's kind of rising up to the top. Uh, it can't really get trapped down low. So I feel that that really makes our, our energy bill a little bit higher than most people. But our typical energy cost for a really hot August is going to be about $500, $450 to $500. And that's going to, you know, in July, it's probably going to be somewhere around $350, $400. And same thing with June and September. So you're paying a lot for electric in those, in those months. Uh, but then come winter, you know, we really don't run anything. We don't even really turn on the furnace. We have a fireplace that we run a gas fireplace and that, that pretty much warms up the, the entire house. And it's really nice because we get to put that on pretty much um, December through February. We, we run that uh, fireplace once a night. So definitely a, a, a nice benefit of uh, living here. It's, it's just cold enough to where you can enjoy a uh, fireplace and not have to turn the heat on. So let's talk about car registration. If you own a car from 2017 and you paid $20,000 for that car, I'm gonna check my notes over here, your cost for registration is gonna be $203.72. And that's gonna drop the next year to 170, then to 142. In 2023, you're gonna be paying 120. In 2024, you're gonna be paying $100. So it costs a lot at first, but then that cost definitely goes down as your car gets older. Uh, if you're a person who likes to purchase new cars, you know, every uh, every couple of years, then you're, you're definitely gonna be eating that bill and uh, it's definitely a bummer. So car registration here is quite a bit. So let's talk about taxes on buying things. I know in Chicago, it's like over 10% now if you go and buy something. Uh, here in Phoenix, it's at the lowest 8.6, might get up to about 8.9. It depends on what the uh, city or town tax rate is on top of the state tax. So uh, that can, you know, that's definitely kind of on par with the rest of the country. Um, but one cool thing is that if you're gonna purchase groceries, anything that, you know, is, is, is grocery items, food, chips, um, bananas, whatever, uh, from Trader Joe's or whether you're going to um, Sprouts or Fries or wherever it might be, Fries is kind of like the old jewel. Um, so you're not gonna be paying any tax on groceries. So that's great and that definitely uh, puts a little bit more money into your pocket that you can spend on more groceries or just something else. So yes, groceries are tax exempt here, so that's a benefit. Okay, so let's talk about a night out because obviously we have housing costs, utility costs, but hey, we wanna go out and have a good time, right? So I live in Gilbert and in Gilbert, uh, you'll go to the restaurants and typically there's like a half hour wait. There's a lot of people here in Gilbert um, and there's just basically one downtown strip, but there are other areas. I mean, Gilbert's such a big place. There's a ton of restaurants, ton of, a ton of bars. 
uh, a ton of places to go. So um, one of my favorite places though is downtown Gilbert. And so I, I think, you know, there's a lot of residents that, that feel the same way. So usually you're looking at about a half hour wait and uh, the price is there. So I'm a big Bloody Mary fan. One of my favorite places is Snooze. And I'll get a Bloody Mary in the morning. And uh, that's typically about an $8 Bloody Mary. So I've seen higher priced Bloody Marys. I've seen lower priced Bloody Marys. Um, but just to give you an idea for a cost of a decent drink, uh, down there in downtown Gilbert. And if you're going to be ordering, whether it's breakfast or dinner, you're looking at like $12 to $15 plates for, you know, a burger and fries, something. And it's, it, that's going to be a little more gourmet. Uh, there is a place in downtown Gilbert. Uh, it's a big gopher called Topo. And, uh, you can get an $8 burrito here and it's really, really delicious. And they also have soft serve, which is going to be um, you know, not sure the price offhand, but your typical soft serve ice cream price, not too expensive. If you're going out for an evening, you can expect to spend about $40 between two people on uh, drinks and a dinner, and that would be one drink per person. And one thing that's pretty cool about driving around here is you don't pay a toll. I know in Chicago, I would get, you know, $40 bills every month for, for t running through the, uh, through the tolls through, with my iPass. And uh, here you're not going to have to pay to drive on the streets. So that's always a plus. Let's talk a bit about gas prices. So in Arizona, it's not the greatest gas price, but it's not the worst either. So our national average, let me look at my cheat sheet over here, is about $2.20 right now. According to the uh, AAA website here, you can go online, gasprices.aaa.com, and get a glimpse of uh, gas price averages around the country. So uh, right now, the national average is 220, and Arizona's at 231. So if you compare some states here, um, Illinois is at 232, and if we go over to let's see, Pennsylvania 251. If we go over to New York 228, so a little bit less actually than Arizona. And if we go over to California, there's where you see a big discrepancy. That's going to be three dollars and 24 cents. And so gas prices, you can check them out, but. You know, Arizona's right there on the national average in terms of gas prices. So another expense you're going to have are HOA fees. And those could be anywhere from $30 upwards to $250. And I know you're like, whoa, 250 bucks? Like, why is, why is it so expensive? Calm down. Those are for the uh, neighborhoods that don't have a whole lot of homes, but they're, you know, million dollar homes. So I, if there's less homes in the community, they're going to have a higher HOA fee. So uh, the $250 one, they're going to just, you know, have common area maintenance. Maybe they'll have a pool. Uh, I personally pay about a hundred bucks a month and uh, we have two different pools and we have a full-time landscaping company that really takes care of everything. I mean, we had a monsoon a few days ago. There's hail. There is hail. Hail in Arizona. And the next morning, you know, we had an email coming out to us saying, hey, we're going to take care of all the downed trees. If you see anything, just give us a call. Like you could put in a work order. They'll come fix it for you uh, or they'll come, you know, take care of, uh, you, you know, in the common area. If you see a tree that's, um, you know, a danger to somebody or knocked down, you can definitely you can give the HOA a call. And there's actually a landscaping number. You can call the landscaping number and, uh, yeah, they'll get somebody over there pretty quick. So it's really nice to have all that at your fingertips um, rather than having to call the uh, city or the town. Uh, and it's it's just a, a huge benefit. And they also use that money to, uh, to throw events for the community. And, um, you know, just having the two pools is, is really nice. And, and they do a great job with it. No complaints on living in an HOA. It's something coming from a non-HOA uh, state like Illinois. I mean, there are HOAs there, but you're a little hesitant at first. Like, I don't want to deal with an HOA. I hear they're really bad, but uh, they're actually not so bad. I mean, if you can just play by their rules, it'll be fine. So HOA fees, anywhere from $30 to $250. And uh, at the $30 range, there's not going to be a full-time landscaping company or anything like that. You'll notice those communities um, are a little more run down and I hate to say run down, but just not as well taken care of as some of these other communities where you're paying a little bit more, um, you know, like a hundred bucks to the HOA. 
So another big cost you're gonna have living here that you won't have anywhere else is your water bill. And uh, if you live in a newer home, newer communities, they seem to have, a lot of them seem to have grass. So anything uh, 2000 and up, um, more of the 90s homes and some of those older homes are gonna have uh, more of a desert landscape. So City of Mesa does have a water calculator. It can actually calculate um, how many gallons of water you will need based on the square footage of the grass and desert landscaping that you have. So I just happened to put in a few numbers here and I, I have my calculator. So I put in, uh, I put in 1500 square feet for grass and a thousand square feet for just desert landscaping. And desert landscaping is gonna have some plants there, um, but it's mostly gonna just be rocks with, with a few plants, maybe a few palm trees. So your cost per year you're looking at extra is gonna be about $302 with that type of scenario. And it's gonna be most costly in August because August is the hottest month. Actually, this one's showing June and July uh, to be the hottest. So you're looking at roughly $42 added on to your monthly bill uh, to keep your grass green, to keep uh, you know your plants alive. And that's not something you have to do either. You don't have to have, uh, you don't have to water your grass actually in the summer. You can let the Bermuda grass go dormant and then you can overseed in the winter, which is another cost, overseeding. Usually about 100 to 200 bucks to have a landscaper do that. Uh, if you wanna do it yourself, you'll you know, probably spend about 30, $40. So overseeding the uh, winter grass, um, and, and you know, you're gonna run the, uh, you're, you're gonna wanna water that quite a bit in October, and then you know, just kind of water it consistently, but not as much as those summer months. So in the summer months, you can let the Bermuda grass go dormant, and then um, choose to have that winter uh, rye grass, that winter uh, overseed uh, in the uh, winter months, October through May. And how many gallons of water is that? Well, you're gonna be consuming about 68,000 gallons of water that year in that scenario. So 68,000 gallons of water, um, the grass is gonna be taken in 53,000 gallons of that, and then the desert landscaping, 15,000 gallons of that. So 300, 300 bucks a year, divide that by 12, uh, you know, somewhere around, what is that? Like like a little less than 30 bucks a month. So that's what you're gonna be paying extra to make sure that you have a nice, lush lawn. Hey, thanks for watching. For more videos on escaping to Arizona, just click that subscribe button to stay in the loop.